Okay, well, we wanted an activity to be about like doing things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, applications are about doing things too, but um, part of the reason was to kind of break the expectation of you know what people thought an application was. Because when you think application, we have a very well-defined idea of what that is. It's Photoshop. It's you know. Um, instant messaging, it's um, a game or something like that. Um, and, you know, we kind of wanted to break that expectation that, you know, this is what something that you run is. What it's supposed to be is we want it to be much more of a, an interactive thing with other kids. We want it to be a lot about, you know, who you're working with at the time. Things don't have to be shared, activities don't have to be shared, but we want all activities to have the capability of being shared with other people. If you want to be able to join an activity with somebody else, you need an act that program, right? You need to be able to interact with them using that program. If you join an activity for which you do not have the source code for that activity, you download it, you install it on your computer, and it runs it for you, and you're able to just interact with them. It's crazy, like, if some kid has a ball and you can't play with them because you can't share that ball, uh, it would be crazy to not be able to share the applications or the games that they're playing so that you could play with them or, or interact with them. So we have about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 in our current build. And they're going to be the base apps that are going to go on. And then what countries are going to do is add apps, take away apps that they think are right for their, their cultures. Because one size doesn't fit all. And there's two sets of tools that we have on the laptop. One set of tools are tools for exploring. So we've got a web browser and we've got you know, email and chat and things like that. And then there's tools for expressing. And so we've got the camera, we've got word processing, we've got m musical composition tools and things like that. I know one of the things when I, when I grew up was, um, I used to use a paint program called Dazzle Draw, which is very similar to this. You just draw lines all over the place. And kids really like to do visual stuff. This is Tam Tam, the music app which is pers my personal favorite. And mostly it's the first one the kids go to and actually stick with for a long time because it's the fun one. Music is very mathematical. Um, it's, been, it's been shown that the uh, you know, kids who are very good in math are very good in music also. Um, uh, so it's, it's just another aspect of learning. If, if they can put together scales and, and make things sound nice, um, their brain's working to translate that creativeness to other aspects of their lives too. It was more of a, a case of, you know, let's start from scratch. Like, how do we want kids to work with these machines? So that was one of the first things that we were thinking about was how can we build the sharing and the communication directly into um, the software that the children use on these machines. The children can discover what's inside of it or outside of it or between each other themselves and explore and kids will and they'll reach out to kids in different countries and we have Sistran tools so you know the kids in China can talk to the kids in Brazil and Rwanda and, and find out what life is like there and they've got their little video cameras and they can show like how they live and what kind of animals are there and it's 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 a really cool way to learn about the world by kids talking to to kids to find out stuff.